Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is Guntur Medical College, Department of Anatomy. In this dissection video, we will see the quick revision of the muscles of the lower lip. We have detailed compartments of the thigh and compartments of the leg in our channel. You go through that for the detailed video. In this one dissection video, we will cover all the muscles of the lower lip. To start with, I will start with the front of the thigh. So what you are seeing, this is the front of the thigh muscles. This muscle which is crossing the thigh, front of the thigh is the sartorius muscle. Sartorius takes origin from the anterior superior iliac spine and it is inserted to the upper part of the medial surface of the shaft of the tibia. As it is taking origin crossing the hip joint and it is inserted beyond the knee joint, it acts on both joints and it is also called as Taylor's muscle. Apart from sartorius, the next muscle of the front of the thigh or you are seeing this is the rectus femoris and this is vastus medius and this is vastus intermedius and this is vastus lateralis. So these four muscles together will be called as quadriceps femoris and this quadriceps femoris if you see the origin, this rectus femoris will have the two heads of the origin straight head and reflected head, straight head from the anterior inferior iliac spine and reflected head from the guru above the acetabulum. If you see the origin of this vastus medialis, it takes origin from the intertrochantric line and from the medial lip of the linea aspera. If you see the vastus lateralis, this is the largest of the quadriceps, it takes origin from the lower part of the intertrochantric line and lateral lip of the linea aspera. If you see the vastus intermedius, it takes origin from the surfaces, anterior surface and the surfaces of the femur. If you see the insertion, this patella is the sesamoid bone formed in the quadriceps femoris muscle and by this ligament it is inserted to the tibial tuberosity. So tibial tuberosity is the insertion of the quadriceps femoris. And here this patella is the sesamoid foam bone formed in the quadriceps femoris. If you see the action of this quadriceps, it is the extension of the knee joint. If you see the nerve supply of this front of the thigh muscles, it is supplied by the femoral nerve, by the anterior or by the posterior divisions. So we have completed the front of the thigh. Now we will see the medial side of the thigh muscles. So this is the femoral triangle which we have covered already in the previous videos. So what is this muscle? Adductor longus and this is the sartorius boundaries of the femoral triangle. Now we will move on to the medial side of the thigh. Medial side of the thigh consists of pectineus or you see the small muscle here. This is the pectineus muscle and obturator or externus which is not seen in this. Apart from that we have three adductors. Adductor longus, this is the adductor longus and this is the adductor brevis and this large muscle is the adductor magnus. And apart from that we have this long slender muscle in the medial side of the thigh, it is the gracilis muscle. First, this gracilis, if you say it takes, see, it takes origin from the pubis and it is inserted to the same as the sartorius, upper part of the medial surface of the shaft of the tibia. You can see three tendons are inserted at one place. You can see this is the sartorius, gracilis, and this is the semitendinosus. Upper part of medial surface of shaft of tibia and they are called as the gyros. If you see the remaining muscles, adductor longus, brevis, magnus, they will take origin. So this is the medial side of the thigh muscles. It will take origin from the medial part of the hip bone that is, that is the body of the pubis and the ramus of the pubis and they will be inserted along the lips of the medial lip of the linea aspera. If you see this magnus it will consist of two parts adductor part and hamstring part. Hamstring part will take origin from the ischial tuberosity. Now supply of this medial side of the thigh muscle the obturator now either by its anterior or posterior division supplies supply these muscles. If you see the action of these muscles, name itself suggests adduction, so adductor, so it causes adduction of the thigh. We have completed the medial side of the thigh also. Now we will see the back of the thigh muscles. In this dissection video, we are not seeing the gluteal region which is not present in this disarticulated lower limb. 
but you can see a cut end of the gluteus maximus which is the largest muscle of the gluteal region now we will move on to the back of the thigh muscles also called as hamstrings if you see what are the muscles in this medial side we have two muscles semi tendinosus and semi membranosus if you see on the lateral side it is the biceps femoris having the long head and the short head all these muscles take common origin from the ischial tuberosity insertion of the tendon semi tendinosus we have already told it is the upper part of the medial surface of the shaft of the tibia and this insertion of the semi membranosus it is the posterior surface of the medial condyle of the femur insertion of the biceps femoris is into the head of the fibula if you see the nerve supply of this back of the thigh muscles it is supplied by the tibial compound of, of the sciatic nerve you are saying this is the tibial sciatic nerve by its tibial component it supplies the back of the thigh muscles if you see the action of this back of thigh muscles it causes flexion at the knee joint and extension at the hip joint along with the gluteus maximus muscle hamstrings cause extension of the hip joint and flexion of the knee joint so this back of thigh muscles form the upper boundaries of the popliteal fossa if you come to the lower boundaries of the popliteal fossa they are formed by the back of the leg muscles so now we will complete the back of leg muscles first then we will move on to the front and lateral compartment of the leg you are saying this is the these are the two heads of the gastrocnemius the lateral head and medial head they take origin from the condyles of the femur so this just to deep to this yes here are you saying this muscle is the soleus so along with this gastrocnemius and soleus soleus takes broad origin from both the tibia and fibula and it resembles the soleus sole of the foot so it is called as soleus so all these three muscles together form this achilles tendon this is the achilles tendon longest tendon of the body about 20 10 cm long and it is inserted into the posterior surface of the calcaneus so if it acts it causes the flat plantar flexion of the ankle joint so these three muscles form the along with the plantar is form the superficial group of the muscles if you see the deeper group of the muscles in this region on the lateral side you have the flexor hallucis longus and on the medial side flexor digitorum longus in between we have the tibialis posterior the nerve of this compartment is this branch of the sciatic nerve tibial nerve and posterior tibial artery if you see the action of this compartment as i have already told achilles tendon causes plantar, plantar flexion of the ankle joint tibialis posterior is the inverter and the flexors will cause the flexion of the toes we have completed the back of the leg now we will move on to the front of the leg so the front of the leg consists of four muscles so this is the medial surface of the shaft of the tibia and this is the lateral surface of the shaft of the tibia taking origin from the lateral surface of the shaft of the tibia this is the tibialis anterior and its tendon this is the tibialis anterior muscle and its tendon inserted to the first metatarsal the next muscle in this compartment is the flexor hallucis longus and this is the flexor digitorum longus and here is the peroneus tertius all these three muscles take origin from the medial surface of the shaft of the fibula so this four muscles are supplied by the deep peroneal nerve which is the branch of the common peroneal nerve if you see the action of this tibialis anterior it causes inversion and also this flexors will cause the flexion of the toes peroneus tertius will cause the eversion also this tibialis anterior causes the dorsi flexion at the ankle joint so we have completed this front of leg muscles lateral compartment of leg muscles you are nicely seeing only two muscles so this is the peroneus longus and this is the peroneus brevis they take origin from the lateral surface of the shaft of the fibula and longus is inserted to the sole of the foot and this brevis is inserted to the fifth metatarsal the nerve of this compartment is the superficial peroneal nerve which is the branch of the common peroneal nerve so we have completed the three compartments of the leg also if you are asked the dorsum of the foot you should remember anterior compartment of the leg of the muscles will be here present tibialis anterior so this is tibialis anterior extensor hallucis and this is extensor digitorum 
Apart from that, extensor digitorum brevis muscle is also present in the dorsum of the foot. Sole of the foot, I am not covering in this dissection video, we have covered already sole of foot, we can go through this. It has four layers and we have covered that video separately. So this video is the quick revision of the muscles of the lower limb, three compartments of the thigh and three compartments of the leg. I hope you should have understood this. Thank you.